previously on Max and Ock. I'm moving out. You may recognise Sorel. Oh my god, that's nasty. I trust you. There's no one here. My home. I hope you're all ready for paradise. Highway. A straight road to follow. I cannot believe after all that, I am here. Welcome to Nanji. I still am getting over the fact that I'm actually here. Welcome aboard. Thank you for joining me on this journey. This video, I really wanna focus on my first few days on the boat, my impressions of what it's like and the transition from van life to boat life. I feel like there's gonna be so much to cover with this video, so let's get straight into it. Benita is gonna kindly show us around the space inside the boat, so give you a bit of a lay of the land or the boat. You're evicted for the tour. Get out of here, you bars. Hi everyone, welcome to our sailboat Nanji. Uh, she's a 40 foot cutter rig sloop and she's been our home for the last five years. We're so stoked to have Max on board and we love that he's already spent a lot of time living in a small space because it's a small space. <laughs> right, come on through. Just gonna take these ones carefully still. This is the main area that we like to hang out in. It's called the saloon. And uh, my partner, Josh actually renovated this last year in preparation for our daughter, Tallulah. So it's all bright and fresh and uh, it looks amazing. So yeah, we love yeah, it. He did a great job. <laughs> this front room here is called the V-Birth and this is Max's room. So he has all of that space up there to himself. The bed is queen size in width, but not quite in length. So Max being quite tall, his feet might hang over the edge. <laughs> I'm sure I'll get I'll get by. <laughs> this room down here is the bathroom, which we call the hot box because it gets quite hot in there. It is quite small, but it's actually quite a big bathroom for a boat this size. We don't have hot water and we have very limited fresh water. So that's something to be mindful of and something I'm sure Max has already dealt with. And down here we have the galley. So this is the kitchen. Uh, one of the main features of the kitchen is having a gimbaled oven. So this moves around while we're sailing so that the pots and stuff don't fall off while we're moving around. Uh, we have a fridge and a freezer here. This is the main one. And we also have a pull-out drawer fridge down under the couch below. And then this room back here is the main bedroom. <laughs> so this is our bedroom and uh, it's also got a queen size bed and plenty of storage space as well. So yeah, that's the boat. Oh, it's not too bad. Well, how bloody cool is this? As a lot of you know, this is my first time actually meeting these guys in person. And I have to say, I'm already blown away by how nice they are and how much I love this boat. I can't wait to share more of it with you, but for tonight, I'm gonna to spend it getting to know them a little bit better. I'll see you in the morning for our first sail. So first morning on Nanji, I have the coffee, which is obviously important. And um, have a look at this sunrise. Forward. And we are actually motoring off because we're heading towards some surf and just going to make the most of this really nice weather that we've got for the next few days. Morning. This is my concentration phase. It's pretty tight in here. It's a real skinny reef entrance. It's only like a meter on the side of the hull. Are we 
we're making our way down the coast here. We've got this little gentle breeze, so that means we pretty much got to pull up the mainsail. And I don't do that now that we got crew. So Max, let's get up that mainsail. Yep, and I, I know what that means because it's the big one, right? <laughs> it's the big one in the middle. The main one. Yeah, but Benita will yell at you. Okay. <laughs> Can I stand on anything? Oh, on this? Yeah, stand, yeah, just hang on there because wait, there's a bit of a roll here. How do you guys reach this? <laughs> okay, that's unzip. So now that the main's up, what's that mean? So that's how you hoist the main. Uh, so having the mainsail up, it is only light winds and we are motoring, but the mainsail really helps balance the boat on a mono hull. It really helps keep you balanced, so you'll prevent that roll. Just because like, even, it'll give you an extra like half a knot maybe, like, but it just prevents you from really flopping around and it'll help you hold course in one straight line. And then uh, generally when you're sailing, the mainsail is what will bring the bow to windward, so it'll tighten you up and hold you closer to the wind, if that makes sense. Sometimes the wind blows in the right direction when it's pushing you towards the sunset like a ghost And I know that you'll learn to love the lesson That some things you have to find out on your own Apparently, where I'm currently swimming in is 900 meters deep Should we try and touch the bottom? So today is the first day we've had quite a lot of wind and we're going to go for a sail. We've actually just reefed the sails, which Josh has explained to me essentially takes a bit of power out of them. Is that right? It's reefing is basically the way of not putting up as much sail as you can. Rather than going full sail, we're just going to be conservative and we'll put a second reef in. So I think I'm going to put up like half of the main sail because it is blowing 20, 25 knots today. So it is pretty windy. He's been very good at teaching me everything as we go because the plan is that hopefully I can start to learn all this and be able to be a bit more self-sufficient and uh, that includes as basic as tying the knots because I don't know how to, <laughs> how to do anything. The, definitely the aim is to have Max sailing Nanji without us because then we can kick back and Max can sail. Yeah. <laughs>
you think Bug sleeps the best when uh, she's getting rocked, <laughs> rocked by the boat actually in sail? Absolutely, hey. I think the uh, the motion of the ocean definitely lets her sleep a little bit better. Yeah. She looks pretty calm at the moment. <laughs> the challenge. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. That's, this is why we don't have a good camera because it's like <laughs> it's hard. I'm uh, learning the challenges of trying to film whilst we're out at sea, and um, I do love the fact that you know we're purely under sail so we're not using any form of power other than the wind to go at the same time collecting power from the sun on the solar panels for to charge the batteries and I think that's one of the things I love about sailing over the van is you know until the the technology with electric vans comes around this ability to just use nothing essentially and get from A to B it's pretty bloody cool Agree. And, Agree. Then, and then we have a water maker that runs purely off the solar so we can make water from the sun. Yeah. Crazy concept. And that's so that's like a, their own mini desal plant essentially. So they're changing the salt water into drinkable water. That ability is amazing. So put the foot down, eh? How fast can we go? So we have made it through our sail for today. Two for two with no spew. Pretty happy with that one. And now we are actually about to cut through a channel in between two of the islands of the Mentawise because we need to head to a village on the other side. Out here we have no internet or phone reception at all. And so to be able to check in on everyone, I need to want to check in on Oki, but also I actually need to upload a video and just you know, all around touch base. We want to go get some reception before we head back out and keep going south. And apparently the passage through is quite beautiful. It's time to go discover the world. It's time to go discover the world. Now that is a real rainfall shower. The other guys are sleeping down the other end, so I'll try and keep this down a little bit because it has been a big day on the sail and turns out, sick of cap, the internet won't work there with this amount of cloud cover. They essentially just said, try again in the morning when it's clear because it'll be grinding to a halt at the moment. The beauty of that is, is we have our home with us, just like me in the van. These guys have always got their home with them, so we can just take it slow. We're going to play cards later tonight. And it also gives me the opportunity to thank today's video sponsor, which is Surfshark. Surfshark VPN has been a supporter of my channel for a long time, but I've also been using them for years to protect my data. If you don't know what a VPN is, it's a virtual private network. And the way that that works is essentially whenever you go on data online, especially on public Wi-Fi, it encrypts it all. So people, anyone that tries to hack into you, they can't read anything. They can't steal any passwords. You're completely safe. As well as that, what I love about Surfshark is that it lets you use it across all your devices. So even if you're a family, you can get the one subscription and use it across every device in the house just with that one subscription. No other VPN does that. But by far my favorite feature of Surfshark is that with a click of a button, I can change my IP address from thinking I'm in Indonesia or say I'm back in Australia to another country. And my go-to all the time is I change my IP address to Canada. And the reason I do that is because turns out Canadian Netflix has the biggest selection of Netflix in the world. So that's a little hot tip for you coming up to this holiday season. If you want a better selection, 
flick over to the Canadian Netflix. The beauty of trying out Surfshark is, is that it's 100% risk free because they offer a 30 day money back guarantee. If you are interested in giving it a go, use the discount code MAXOKI. I'll also put the link in the description below and that will give you 83% off as well as four extra months free. Insanity. Let me know if you already use it. I know a lot of you do and uh, I think it's time to whoop their ass in some cards. Oh. 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 <laughs> 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 Oh, come on, yeah. man. Well, whilst we're waiting for the tide to come out, just having a little bit of a neaten up, we are at a new surf break called Rags Right. And as you can see, it is, oh, it is just us here. This is, I would say, one of the key advantages for me that I want to go sailing is to be able to sail up to some really remote surf breaks and have them to yourself or with very few people. And I know that is a big thing for the Nanji crew as well. The good thing is, after having a shave, I can jump straight in for a shower. So if you're wondering why we're waiting for the tide to ebb at the moment, it is because the way it's hitting the reef, it is super shallow in front of the wave. So if you get caught inside, you're likely to get cut up. And the reefs in Indo are super sharp. It's inevitable we're gonna get cut, but you try and hold off as long as you can. How nice is it? It's so nice. Oh. Nice morning bath. The water's so clear. <laughs> And if you're wondering about all of this, the sun is brutal here. And if you're spending a lot of time exposed in the surf, then you have to really zinc up. these big squalls made me really nervous because this is the wet season and some of those they're called the Sumatra squalls and they can blow up to 50 knots you know and where we are anchored we're quite exposed so we really want to have Nanji in a safe spot though you've got to pay close attention to these big dark clouds like
So after an amazing few days down south, we're actually motoring back north now because upcoming there's a few days of bad weather. So we need to be somewhere where we can hide from the weather. One thing I've really noticed with the boat and in general is every night you've got to be so on top of it with the weather and the swell, the wind, in terms of where you anchor to make sure you're protected. And it just so happens that there is a slab of a left hand a wave that is on the way to where we're heading and check out these swell lines that are following the boat at the moment. I'm excited, scared, a bit like I'm not 100% sure if this is the right place. I know we're in the right area but I don't know which of these little reef breaks is the actual wave. It's the full surge. But this thing, that thing was just screamingly scary. So <laughs> it's gotta be it. Oh, that's barely. That's gotta be it, man. This is yeah, the second section, big second section. I would say it's gotta be this one down there. Okay. So we're pretty convinced that the wave is the one down the end of the bay and that's where we're gonna head to now. But can we just take a moment you got a pretty bloody kick-ass partner sitting there. <laughs> Benita is floating on the yacht that far off shore with a baby. <laughs> and she's doing it just so we can go on our little boat to go check the surf and see which one's better. Yeah, she's a pretty amazing woman, I'm not gonna lie. I'm definitely uh, definitely lucked out in that because I'm a five and she's a ten. <laughs> <laughs> You're a lucky man, mate. But the good thing is, you know it. I know it, I know it. Yeah. I know it. She's bloody awesome. I can't, I can't speak highly enough of Benita. The stuff she lets me get away with is insane. Insane. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Glad that was said. Let's get a wave. Now it's open I can truly feel alive. see the sweat that is going on here but I have to tell you cooking when you're underway is hard we are motoring along at the moment and I'm pretty wrecked post surf and I'm trying to cook up a dinner for everyone and things just sway everywhere in here and it's really hot because you're you're in between the motor the engine that's running and then the hot fry pan and you're in a humid climate to begin with I mean, hats off to Benita because she has been making some cracker meals while we've been on the go. And uh, I don't think I quite appreciated just how hard it was. Definitely my new favorite coffee mug. 
every morning I wake up here, I just absolutely pinch myself that I'm actually here and actually doing this. We got in late to the anchorage last night, so everyone else is having a bit of a lie-in, but I'm still just frothing on everything. And I'm sure you can tell that. I think coming from van life into the boat has made the transition a lot easier because I'm just in general used to roughing it. I'm used to less water, you know, less electricity, less showers. And yeah, I'm loving every minute of it. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video because I'm actually gonna be wrapping it up here because this weekend is my birthday. I did get an early birthday present though because last night we came into the reception for the first time in a few days and I saw that this channel has hit 100,000 subscribers. Thank you so, so much for all your support and for choosing to follow along on this crazy adventure and you know just to see where this path takes us all. I'm so excited about the future. I hope you are too. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you hit that button, like this video, it helps me out. And while I'm at it, please make sure you go check out Sailing Nanji's channel because I'm in awe of those guys. The fact that they are full-time sailing on this boat in Indonesia with a toddler that's less than one year old and at the same time, they put out weekly videos and have been for years and their videos are bloody epic. So I'm going to put the link to their channel at the end of this video too. Make sure you subscribe to them. Finally. I was also able to check in with Oki and he is doing really well. He is actually helping Kirsten out with her yoga classes. Well, legends, that's it from me. I'm hoping for some nice clean waves this weekend for my birthday to finish off what has been an absolute dream run. Please continue to spread kindness and I will see you all in the next one. Come fly with me, come fly away, come fly with me, come fly away, come fly with me, come fly away, come fly away. It's nothing like I've ever experienced. It's nothing like I've ever seen.